Hello and welcome back to Baby Before You Die channel and in today's video I'll be sharing my key takeaways from the book Tao Te Ching written by Lao Tzu. So Taoism philosophy dates back in 6th century BC and it originated in China and I'll be very honest here that you know there are many verses in this book but I could not understand each and every verse. Uh, the reason for that is number one, uh, I believe that a lot many meanings have been lost in translation and number two that uh, the wisdom that is presented in this book is, uh, is very simple right and we as a human beings uh, do not understand simple things. We like the things to be complex. Uh, so in order to understand this book you need to uh, think simple, you need to be simple and your thoughts should be very clear so but i would still talk about a few of the verses which i really could uh, relate to my life and uh, let's talk about them so i'll read the lines from the verse height and lowness arise from the contrast of the one with another that the musical notes and tones become harmonious through relationship of one another and that's before and behind gives the idea of one following another so this can be comprehended in two two ways uh, one of the way is like us uh, we often uh, you know compare ourselves with others and we often feel that you know we are kind of inferior from others so uh, here author is trying to tell that you know the success and failure is relative so it depends on you know how do you measure it and from which angle you are trying to say it so if you are measuring it from the right angle you will see that success and failure are equally important and uh, if you think that somebody is ahead of you then it depends, you know, if you change the measurement, I mean, you could be ahead of him. If you just change the perspective or change the measurement. measurement. The second uh, way of seeing it is as, you know, if you are behind somebody or somebody is, up, is, is ahead of you, then it's uh, author is trying to compare this with a musical note. So there will be lows and ups in musical note and lows and ups together would become a harmony, right? So, or maybe a symphony. So both low and up are okay in life and it's okay to be uh, some it's, it's sometimes okay to be uh, feeling uh, to feel low it's sometimes okay because you are the part of the larger picture which you cannot see so to be uh, to be harmonious in life you have to accept where you are and not to compare uh, yourself with others another verse is the excellence of water appears and it's befitting all things and it's occupying without striving to the contrary. So my takeaway is that, you know, like the water takes the shape of the vessel. Similarly, we should always adapt ourselves to the situations. And sometimes what happens is, you know, we always keep on thinking about the past and that, you know, oh, past was so glorious, past was so good and the present is not so good. That's because, you know, we have not accepted the surrounding, we have not accepted the present. So I think the we need to accept ourselves we need to accept our surrounding and we need to become like water and then only we and our energies can flow so another verse is so uh, when one gives undivided attention to the vital breath and bring it to the utmost degree of pliancy he can become as tender babe when he has cleansed away the most mysterious sight of his imagination he can become without flaw so my takeaway from this is like, you know, we sometimes suffer in our imaginations. Uh, things have not happened or things are not that bad as we think in our mind. That happens because, you know, we are not in present. And so what we need to do is we need to become like a baby, right? Who is not corrupted, whose mind is not corrupted. And to become a baby and to become, to remain in present, one has to focus on his breath. So if we can focus on our breath, it will help us to come back to present and when, when you are present we will be able to see the holistic view of our life and our problems and I think we will be able to see the solutions instead of, of the problems. So another verse is clay is fashioned into a vessel but it's on the empty hollowness that their use depends. So my takeaway from this is like you know like an earthen pot. The useful part of the pot is the empty space not the pot itself. So similarly, we build a house, right? So we think that, you know, walls and almiras and everything is essential, but it's not the walls and almiras. It's the empty space within. And how do we use that empty space? 
that is more important in life also we need to focus on ourselves instead of focusing on others because outside world is a materialistic world and inside world is a spiritual world so all these solutions to the problem that we have created outside are inside itself so another verse is the muddy water clear let it be still and it will gradually becomes clear who will who will secure the condition of rest let women go on and condition of rest will gradually arise so this is a very relatable topic and i think uh, one can relate this to life so what happens in life is you know whenever uh, there are a lot of emotions running in our head it's very difficult to take decisions and it and often we take wrong decisions so if you want to take the right decision if you want to see the clear picture i think what we need to do is we need to keep the emotions aside and not try to get influenced by the emotions in our thinking and if you can get the thinking right without emotions we will be able to see the things clearly and in a better in a better way and that will help us in taking the right decisions so another verse from the book is there is no guilt greater than to sanction ambition no calamity greater than to be discontented with one's lot no fault greater than the wish of getting therefore the sufficiency of contentment is an enduring and unchanging sufficiency so what he is trying to say here is that you know once pure focus in life should be to attain his ambition because if you are not able to achieve your ambition you will be always be discontented in life having said that author is also saying that though it's good to achieve your aims though it's good to uh, run for your dreams but you should always be content with whatever you have because if you are not content with whatever you have already despite of chasing dreams despite of getting whatever you want, you want in life your life will always have a lack so one should be content with whatever he has and he should aim for the highest thank you for watching this is vipul signing off till we meet again